Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. Mark here, my daughter Tiana, and my wife Tara. And winter has started. <laughs> we got a uh, foot of snow, approximately a foot of snow, uh, the other day. And um, we've cleared out the driveway. So with our new Kubota tractor, which uh, Tara seems to be enjoying. Only took her about 45 minutes. Where normally, uh, what did it take you? Nine hours to shovel it. <laughs> wow, shovel it. <laughs> to use a, uh, a snow blower, a, a walk behind. That was about uh, usually four hours a couple once hours. we got the snow blower. Yeah, yeah, so oh, it I'm made a in. huge difference. So we're just coming out to uh, feed the animals. We're gonna start in the, uh, in the front. Tiana's gonna go in, uh, get the food ready for the alpaca and the sheep and goats. Good morning. Uh, so we've got our waters, our Gallagher waters, uh, little, um, what do they call? Little, little spring 2900. Uh, Gallagher sells these. Uh, and we've got our water and everything all set up, our heaters on. And so we're ready for the, uh, the winter time. Hi, Carl. You looking for some hay? Here's Billy. They're starting to use their, I don't know what uh, Meadow's doing over there. And Levi's bum sticking out. <laughs> Daisy, Daisy must be, yeah. Daisy must be in there. <laughs> I call that Daisy's house. Tara calls it uh, Billy's house. I think it's more Daisy's than anything. <laughs> loud you guys it's the geese that are the culprits they're the loud ones <laughs> all right so we got our water we don't uh, we only give them we ration their water because of course ducks do play in it and uh, they're all nice and cozy in here this is their winter home. <laughs> so this is a product called Healthy Straw. And we put that down, we find it's very absorbent. Works really well, especially in, uh, in an area where there's ducks and geese, which can definitely be messy. Yeah, all the babies. <laughs> uh, and there's Fernando. <laughs> Morning, Bun Bun. <laughs> okay, so hay for, hay for the horses. Tiana's uh, met us out here. Did you, uh, what did you, you didn't feed the alpaca yet, have no, you? No, I put the food in. Ah, okay. Make sure everything was up. Okay, so we'll get in there and see that action. Oh, <laughs> are you guys waiting for something? <laughs> All right, who's up first? No? Uh, Billy and Levi want I don't know, some good stuff, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Boo! Boo! Oh, you see him give him a little tap? <laughs> yeah. You see that? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. Uh, so we had the uh, the female goats in here for a week, and last weekend we uh, we took them back into the back. Uh, the girls had broke out and uh, wanted to come up front, so we got that all done. So we're expecting our kid goats in uh, April, right at the uh, probably the first week of April. Uh, 150 day gestation, and uh, there's uh, four. Four does that we uh, we brought up. Hi. 
What do you want, Carl? <laughs> he says, I want my own pile. Everybody's got their pile. <laughs> oh, mommy's going to get you a pile. <laughs> there you go, bud. <laughs> uh, of course, Billy just roams the piles to see which one's the best one. Roams the piles to see who he can annoy. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you put more piles than you got? Animals, yeah, you got it. Seems pretty humid in here. The temperature looks like it's about six, seven degrees and the fan back there is off. So we'll have yeah, to turn that, fan. we'll have to turn that on. Hi kids. How's the kids? <laughs> All right. Look out. Yeah, away from the gate. <laughs> Hang on. All right. So, I pointed this out a few times on how we control the uh, humidity and temperature in here. Uh, so we've got our blower fan, and all I have to do is set this. There we go. So this is a, a mercury switch, and I've got it set to air conditioning, and it's, it's crooked because, of course, we want the temperature to be... Uh, close to freezing, so this only goes down to about 10 degrees Celsius. So the mercury sensor that's in there is now crooked, so I've kind of recalibrated it, and, and now we have the fan running. So this fan should run and shut off to keep the temperature just above freezing. That means you have uh, the humidity is low, and you've got good air ventilation. <laughs> what are you doing, Sheldon? So these guys are in here for the winter months. Now uh, we had to jostle a few different groups around. Uh, these guys are usually out. Hi, bud. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> They're usually out in uh, the smaller area. So outside we've got uh, Edward Leo, Sue, and Skunk. So they're the new ones that came in uh, in the fall. Uh, so we're going to keep those out there because the, uh, the two boys, the goats, were, um, uh, their horns are really big and they're just kind of getting in the way. Uh, they're like big puppy dogs. And this is a different angle. So this is Paula. We've got Shanzi here. Got the pigs coming in. They know where they're going. Uh, we did have uh, some some new recruits come in. I don't know if you can see them very well there. We'll go take a better look. Uh, but we've got seven peafowl uh, that came in. Uh, and you may notice it's a little dark over in that area. Uh, one of them took out one of these lights. We've got two lights on the ceiling. And one of them flew up and, um, and took out one of the lights. Sheldon, are you being bossy? <laughs> Hi, Snow. <laughs> They're like, uh, I want to have some of that. Sheldon, you got to share. You've got to share. Oh, boy. I guess we need some more uh, containers. We'll bring some more containers out here. Because <laughs> he wants it all to himself. <laughs> yeah, we've got Blackie and Sheldon, mother and son, hogging the food. 
looks like things may be wrapping up over here. Oh, there we go. The door's open. I'll pack her out. Yeah. Petey and Piper need a little bit of uh come on. Come on, kids. Yeah, you got it all, Piper. You got it all. <laughs> come on, Petey Piper. There you go. Come on, Petey. No, keep going. Yeah, I know there's probably morsels that fell down. Hi, Coco. Hi, Coco. <laughs> okay, here we go. The new recruits. Actually, it's not so loud in here. These guinea fowl are uh, usually really noisy. All right, so we have four boys and three girls. These are Indian blue pea fowl. Uh, so you can probably see the difference between the male and the female. Uh, the male has blue on its neck and the female and demeanor as well. Usually the males have their heads up higher. Uh, and the female actually has green on the neck. You can see that one right in there. Uh, so, uh, the story with these guys is uh, there was somebody that was getting a farm all up and ready. They want a little hobby farm. And they were getting some animals all ready. Uh, and uh, they had to get some inspection for uh, property management or building management uh, permits and, and such. And they found out that there's an ordinance against peafowl in their particular area. Uh, now, peafowl, you know, there's probably an ordinance of guinea fowl in that same area because they're loud. Uh, but the uh, the peafowl have quite the screech. Uh, so we had prince and princess a few years ago, and uh, we had uh, we had lost them, and we just didn't get any other peafowl to replace them. Uh, but now we have seven new ones. So. We're gonna have to uh, maybe adjust some things outside come spring, and uh, and maybe have some of them free range because I believe these ones were free range, weren't they, Tara? Yeah, they were free range. Yeah, so so they are beautiful birds. They do come in all white albino. Uh, we had some albino a few years back, but I don't know. Kind of once once you get them, they're neat, but there's no color to them. These guys these guys have a lot of color. Are also a very pretty bird. Oh, with the color and the white. Yeah, the so white. there's a, a blend of white, and you get them, I believe, from mixing, I would say, mixing yeah, the albino white. and the, uh, the Indian blue. Yeah. So these guys, you can see, don't have their tail. Uh, they'll shed off their tail in the fall, and then over the winter, they'll start to grow the tails back. Uh, you can see on this one here that... Uh, you know, the tail feathers are just starting to peek out. So in a couple months time, all ready for spring, the it will be a, basically all tail in here. There's gonna be a seven foot long tail and there's gonna be four of them in here. So that might make it a little uh, difficult to move around. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Okay, everybody is fed. Are we, Petey? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so the two Canadian geese that we left outside, <laughs> you can see here, there's Glenn, uh, that's Gwen, uh, and then Glenn is over there. So they actually made their way in. I guess they came in. I guess they're, all their friends went away, and they're like, uh, well, we, uh, we want to come in too. So uh, they came in. Uh, anyway, uh, they're drinking out of uh, the water there. It was frozen. Uh, so the girls were saying, well, there's a problem with the water uh, because we're getting it frozen. So we've got it plugged in up here, which is, this is kind of a mess because of the pigeons. Uh, but yeah, there's a ground fault interrupter, same kind of plug that you'll have in your bathroom uh, with the test and reset on it, like the two little buttons. And we've got some lights here. These are white Christmas lights, and that's a like a smart plug. Uh, and it goes and it's wired out to, you can kind of see the Christmas lights go down and then it goes along the fence. Well, Sue and Skunk have been messing around with the, uh, well, with each other. <laughs> and, and they've been messing around with the fence because there were some other animals on the other side of it before we closed them in here. 
and they broke some of the uh, the Christmas lighting. So there's obviously a short to the metal uh, wire fencing, and every time that it comes on, uh, it uh, it blows. And of course, it comes on kind of once a day at night with feeding, so it can be reset. And then you know you ask Google to turn it on, and it blows the uh, the fuse. And then of course that is hooked up or blows the the ground fault. And of course this is hooked up to it. So we're good to go on this. A little bit of troubleshooting. Hi. I guess that's that's Glenn. So Glenn is the first one and Gwen is the far one. They're still a little scared, which they should be because they are wild birds. But um, we'll allow them to stay in here because, um, well, I don't know if Gwen can fly because her um, she was shot in the spring. She's looking a lot better than she did when she came in. Well, and they can get out if they want to get out. Yeah, and they can get out the same way they came in. Uh, Glenn had what's called pin wing or angel wing, which seems to have grown out, and we uh, we had put a band on the wing to uh, to help the uh, the feathers grow in as they should. Uh, so he seems fine, but they may just not want to go. It's like, oh, we like it here, uh, which has happened in the past. We've had uh, Canadian geese in here, and they stay uh, one winter, and then they leave the next fall. So so we'll see what happens. All right, so everybody's tucked in here. Everybody's good. We've closed the gate. Um, I talked about this last weekend. Uh, there's a couple reasons why we closed the gate. Uh, and one of them is uh, Pedro. Oh, here they are right here. Uh, Pedro and Juanita. So they were the last two alpaca to come in. And their coat is very short. Uh, so we left the coat longer on uh, the alpaca that were here. That looks like Jasper, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so his coat is thicker. Their coat is not as thick. Uh, so they went and sheared them too late into the summer. Uh, they should have just left them as they were and then shear them next year. I think we're going to be shearing every two years uh, because these guys don't really grow their coat very fast. And we want to make sure that they're fine during the winter. So, um, them going outside, which alpaca do, they go out, they go into the snow, into the rain, because they don't care, and, uh, and they get wet. So, we don't want these guys to go out and get, um, get wet and get a chill. Normally, you are supposed to shear them every two years, but we were shearing them every year because it was very hot during the summer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we, one year... We just gave them a haircut. Yeah, well, we did that again this year. Well, that's, yeah, you gave them a haircut. Yeah. You spent, how many hours did you spend no, on no, that? I had eight. That was... <laughs> I had working nine hours yeah. on... Tara Paula. Had a, Paula. Tara had a spot in there, and she sat down, and she just kind of... Bought did little, special clippers. Yeah, a little snip snip, and it took... Uh, and was, then, where somebody takes what, maybe 20 minutes? Well, it's because she decided... Oh, no, the professional? Yeah. Five minutes. Is it fine? Well, Five they gotta minutes. flip them and lie them down, yeah. roll them. It's it's because she decided to do it on a hot day, so the alpaca was sweaty. Yeah, so the hair was all and wet that was another thing. Damp. Yeah. So if the hair's damp, it's harder to shear. Yeah. Because <laughs> it sticks together. <laughs> so that's how we learn. We do yeah, things I didn't know around the here. Yeah. the humidity. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> So that's uh, one of the reasons why we've locked the other ones in. Well, and you notice this year, I left them pants. Yes. Because their legs, when they lie down, well, I want them to be warmer. Flies too, right? Yeah, flies. So the flies were getting down into their feet, and we wanted to make sure. So that's why we've, they've got a nice little special haircut. Yeah. <laughs> so the other reason why uh, we closed the gate is last weekend I mentioned that we had uh, a deer that got hit on the highway and then went back to the pond area on the neighbor's property and died. And we had lots of crows um, back there. Now this week, the girls- Crows, hawks, yeah, eagles. Yeah, the girls were, were here and I would come home from work and they would say, oh, and actually the one was, uh, was still in the tree. Two golden eagles. So I took a picture of the bald eagle. And, and for those that don't know, my spirit animal is the bald eagle. So for the last <laughs> three weeks, I've had bald eagles all around my house. I know how dangerous they are to the animals, but yeah. they're beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, and the golden eagles. So Tiana Total, took yeah. a couple pictures 
of uh, there was a golden eagle. Was it just one or was it no, a couple? No, it was just one that was there at the time. At that time, yeah. but the total when I was sitting like between ten and noon, two golden eagles and yeah. eight bald eagles, wow. one baby. Yeah. And of course, the crows were also over there, but of course, yeah. they were they weren't going to be anywhere near those big boys. There was only, <laughs> there was only about five on that that carcass back there, but then. A week ago, there was another one hit on the highway oh, and it died right. in the front ditch, and that's when they all showed yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's coming to the 10 Acre Woods for dinner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the other reason why we, um, we brought them in as well, because we've got these massive seven-foot wingspan birds. Oh, and they were staring them down uh, the house. Like yeah, the well, yeah. when I took a picture of the one up in the tree... You know, I zoomed right in with my telephoto. At you, not the carcass. And it yeah. was, and you could, well, you could see him looking at me, and then he was looking down at the at the pond. Yeah, at the yeah. pond, looking for looking for something else. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, Maggie <laughs> it's has It's good been, we let the old like, Maggie. She's our little little dog, yeah. and I've let her out, watched her, and let her back in. Let her yeah. out, watch her because she's, uh, she's like 12 pounds. Pickings. So yeah. yeah, and that would be that would be easy. Boom. But the nice on. thing is, is even last year with the amount of snow we got. This is very comfortable for all of them in here. Yeah, no, it has been. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, everybody, you know, we're standing in an open area. We've got, you know, it looks like George, George? No, that's, there's a tail on that. Yeah. So that's either JJ or Willow. Willow. <laughs> Willow. Uh, Willow has the little eyeliner. Okay, so we've got the two and like this whole area is open, right? Yeah. Uh, and then. Look at um, the hay file. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What's going on, Paula? Are you I'm stuck in? Hay. It's like there's a bunch of these goats that are surrounding me. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's lots of action over in what's supposed to be the pig pen. But uh, the pigs... Uh, have the pigs been nesting? Right. They've yeah, been, right still there. been nesting are out here. Yeah. Look at it. Look behind Hi. you. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right yeah, there. right here. There's the indent. <laughs> So for some reason, the pigs decide just to nest we right in there. We did that last yeah. year, too. Oh, what are you doing? I'm like, we'll just get a, like, I mean, they both fit in here. Yeah, you fit in there, too. I fit in there, too. <laughs> How warm is it? Is it nice? <laughs> no, it's, I'm throwing out extra hay because. Uh, yeah, so we have tried to, on a couple occasions, move this over into here yeah, they're not which is happening. where they should be and and they just keep on but with the door shut uh, it's actually not bad right yes you guys want to sleep in a different area where's your oh here's your girl here so we're back in the house and we're getting ready for a teddy bear making class uh, so tara puts on different classes uh, during the uh, winter and uh, this is the kind of stuff here that she's been making. So we have, uh, it's a small class today, only uh, supposed to be three, but because of the weather, I guess uh, only two people are showing up. Do so I get to show them my little stash? Your little stash? Well, I was gonna show them, yeah, you get that ready. I was gonna show them the cats here since most of them are all here. This is Rhea. Hi, Rhea. <laughs> little cat update, dog Toby. Toby, look at the water you've got on the floor. <laughs> and then we've got Nix over here. Hi, Nix. Nix and their food bowl. So there's Rhea again. Uh, Coda, I think, is downstairs. The other three are over here. We have Hi. Lucifer. Wow. Hi, bud. <laughs> and then we have uh, Mama to Lucifer and Rhea, which is Anara. Hi. Yes. And we have Tear. Tear's the scared one. Hi, Tear. You can just see it in his eyes. He's getting much better. He's been with us, uh, well, January will be two years. Hi. Yeah. I can sneak in a pet every once in a while. So when he came in, he would have nothing to do with nobody. Maggie. There's Maggie and Toby. So Toby's in now. Um, usually he's out during the uh, the summer with Atlas. Atlas is a Bernese mountain dog. He's outside because he just gets too hot when he comes in. Hi. All right. So what do you got? Oh, there's Coda. 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 
Hi. He's looking at the water until he's got over the floor. Yeah, yeah, making a mess. <laughs> okay, so yes, Tiana made those. She made a few different ones. So her donkey ears. Her rabbit ears. Waskowy widow rabbit. rabbit. And then it all started with her wolf ears. Mm. Which are so cute. Um, and then, so I'm doing a craft sale. I don't usually do craft sales, but I figured it's a great way to do some marketing on the classes that we do. So the mitts. So there's, uh, we made three different sizes. And then our slipper socks which are made with the wool. So they'll all be at the craft sale. Of course, our frustration boards. Yeah, so there's a craft sale at our community club on December 3rd. Yeah. So... Keychains, uh, little booties. She doesn't usually go into the craft... Hasn't gone into craft shows in quite some time. Yeah, a long time. But decided to... But, uh, you know, it's a great way to kind of get people uh, in what we do right and the classes and see the quality that of the stuff that we make well and then the raw wool so you're going to take some wool as well yeah it's all in the bottom it is yeah yeah and then uh all the like alpaca the headbands we got cat coming in <laughs> next um <laughs> and then uh yeah it'll be, oh yeah those are these tears. are these are my original ears yeah the blue ones <laughs> <laughs> Next, there'll be tails, trying to figure out how to do tails. I know how to do the tails, but I need to find a different way to do the tails. I totally would have worn those to school back in the day. I would have been that kid. That that weird kid that wore those to school just because <laughs> it was a headband. I would have been that kid. Start a whole new yeah, fashion. I would have, right? totally. Look at her. Yeah. She's like, I want to get in there. I know there's something that I can cuddle into. <laughs> yeah, so the... Uh, the other stuff is in here, or is it in? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, you've cleared a lot of it out. <laughs> so here's some. <laughs> here's the drawers some. are still full. Oh, okay. The drawers. Yeah. So all the uh, the raw wool that we had processed. Um, so this is the stuff we had done ourselves. So that's the the crafting wool or craft wool, however you want to mention wool. that. Art craft wool. Yarn. Craft, craft yarn. yarn. Sure. Lots of different. Uh, Band-Aids. Oh, we gotta grab my earrings too. Uh, Band-Aids. I got class today. The earrings. other thing I did. Yeah, Band-Aids. Needles. <laughs> the other thing I did. So, uh, I've been playing around with the laser engraver. So, this is uh, Manitoba. And, of course, this little heart down here is where Winnipeg is located. The capital of Manitoba. And Glorious and Free is the tagline for uh, Manitoba. So I was uh, doing up a few different uh, things. This is kind of like a keychain, or you can hang it uh, on your review mirror. I've seen people do that. Uh, so there's, uh, there's some blanks in here that I'm gonna play with and do some different things. Uh, so there's one with, this, this uh, was the first one I did uh, with the writing. I didn't care for the writing so much that way. So I, uh, I did it uh, this way, which looks a lot cleaner. Uh, and this is actually uh, the new laser engraver. You can see the box over here. So it's the X-Tool M1 laser. So I did record uh, the unboxing of it. So I'll be posting that later in the week. It's kind of like the, uh, the Cricut, Cric Cricut, Cricut and uh, Glowforge, I guess, kind of combined. Uh, it does both laser engraving and cutting. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to do it in a few different episodes. So I've done the unboxing and then I've kind of played around with it a little bit so I can get comfortable with it, which it's actually pretty easy to use. Uh, so then I'll do a, um, I'll do a series on them so you can see that. And uh, maybe if you're a crafter or you want to get into or you've been looking for something like that, then this might be the tool for you. So that's it for the end of this video. We also have something else exciting coming up here. Uh, we're working on a hydroponics. So of course uh, that takes some growing to happen. Uh, so we'll probably post a, a video on this new hydroponic system in probably about a month's time or so, depending on how things go. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't subscribed by now, please do so. And we will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.